Okay, here we go. Hey, everyone. Just a second. You can have two channels, too. I didn't know you could put it in the playlist here on one channel. Like, that. that's... Okay, all right. Let, let's go. Branching out because WoW is dead. Yeah, that's about right. And welcome back to another video. So today we are going for something a little bit meta. Now I don't want this to take away from the like the main content that I do, so it's not going to be massively edited, and it's totally something that okay. is uh, okay for just listening to. Now, look, Battle for Azeroth has been a bit of a funky time for the game, and we really okay. don't need to get into why. That's not why this video exists, and really, this video exists because I kind of want to address the, the state of the community, my part in it, and the challenges that we all face, at least how I see them. And to be clear, this video has literally nothing to say about huh. the content of the game. It's entirely agnostic to uh, the state of the game and all that stuff, and uh, it's not speaking to any particular narrative. Uh, that said, if you don't agree with me in this video, please tell me. I would genuinely love to hear the discussion that uh, this one. He got 800 dislikes so, on this video, so I, I don't know. Maybe he's right. Wants to exist. Once the battle lines are drawn up and the narratives are solid uh, solidified in the hive mind of the social media, um, you know, along with the pollutant incentive mechanics of social media, we're left with really little crossing of the streams. We're left wow. with little conversation between people who hold disagreements. Okay. And that all sounds like mighty lofty stuff, and it might seem a little silly to apply it all to video game drama, but um, I really do think that the current expression of our WoW predicament is... That is something that's echoed across the world there. in other Should contexts. So first of all, I want to take uh, just talk about the state of human communication and kind of tear down the concept of positivity and negativity because they're really, really messy, non-specific terms, and I don't think they do anyone any favors. What is a positive opinion? Is that an opinion that's in alignment with Blizzard's thinking? Is that an opinion that anyone... In yes, that's the thing, is that, like, people that want you to be positive about the game... Like, they want to live in a delusional fantasy world, right? Which I think is kind of funny because, I mean, obviously we're all playing a fantasy game, but at a certain point you've got to realize that there's a little bit more to it than that. But maybe I'm just wrong about that, yeah. Uh, they want to live in a fantasy world, and they want you to live there with them. ...individual agrees with. Is it used in reference to something that somebody said, or is it used as a long-term, uh, you know, assessment of their character? So these are, I think, sloppy words that play into a larger problem, which is a lack of specificity. We kind of live in a world where, like, it's what all What a surprise that nuance is lost on the internet. Uh, those things matter because they're powerful tools, and they do not matter because they correlate to the truth. And that's why living in a world of specifics and details is really what's important. Be it in alignment with Blizzard or not in alignment with Blizzard, I think that this lack of specifics in favor of playing into a narrative uh, is one of the prevailing issues that we face. Uh, default. It's completely fucking right. I mean, it's completely fucking right. Let's be honest. I mean, all, all the things like if an idea can't fit into a tweet, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't matter. Like, you, there's no nuance to fucking anything. If you can't fit something inside of a tweet, it doesn't matter. That's it. They're never going to figure it out. It's never going to go anywhere. It's always going to be confusing for people. And unfortunately, that's the reality that we live in, right? That, that's all there is to it. Uh, I'm sorry. Twitter was a mistake. Humanity was a mistake, and Twitter is an outcome of that, okay? Like, there's nothing wrong inherently with Twitter, okay? The problem with Twitter is that people fucking listen to it, and they treat it like the Bible, well, I wish they treated it like the Bible, because at least people know the Bible isn't fucking real. All right, here we go. Let's go to the rest of it. Was that too far? Something to either narrative as the lens through which um, all information is processed is just not that useful. The thing is, okay. though, we often only recognize when we slip up in retrospect. And I think that's something that happens now more so than ever. Why is that? Well, emotional manipulation and modern technology. There so it is. Gamification is when mechanics and rewards are assigned to something. As an example, emotional Twitter manipulation. Likes. Gamification is a tool, and it's a really powerful tool because it plays into the weak spots of human psychology. Now, while we probably okay. all wish we were able to think and then feel, 
I think most of the time we yet feel and then we think, or at least more often than we'd like to admit. I know it certainly is like that for me. It's a totally natural response, but it is a response that's the primary target of many of the mechanics by which our modern means of communication actually works. Even if it's as simple as This is a really meta video. He's like talking about how ideas are transmitted between people. And I'm gonna give you guys a fucking example of what he's talking about, right? Is whenever Classic WoW came out, I started saying no changes. Now, anybody with a fucking brain knows that there are plenty of things that it were change if there were change in Classic WoW, it would probably be a good thing, right? It's like adding colorblind mode, fixing glitches, those types of things, right? Where like your character just like falls through the ground and dies. Like these are obviously not good things about uh, about classic wow that it would be good if they fixed them that being said no changes is an idea that people can get behind i don't want any changes that affect the core gameplay and feel of the game that change the way that it would affect my nostalgia and remember the game the way it was 10 years ago but at the same time i do want to see some changes that maybe make the game a little bit easier to play in terms of uh, functionality and maybe the colorblind mode and uh, widescreen uh, possibilities you know that these this is that's way too complicated nobody's going to understand that because they're dumb, right? And if you want to communicate with people, you have to be stupid. Because if you're not, they won't know what you're saying. During retweets or likes or even uh, being worried that somebody has, you know, not read a Facebook message or maybe that they've read a Facebook message but not responded. It's pretty <laughs> unlikely we're all going to wake up tomorrow as I remember like back in the day, I used to try to talk to girls on Facebook and I would get so fucking mad, dude, if uh, they left me on that, that, that scene check mark, uh, the little blue one there, I would get fucking pissed off. And so what I would start doing, because this would annoy me a lot, is I'd start talking to like 10 girls at a time. So if one of them did that, I'd just start, I'd just go talk to the other one, right? And that way it created, it was a double thing, right? And here's why, is because... Uh, no, it's not like I was talking to him in real life. It's just on the internet, guys. I'm not a chat. I was just a fucking loser. So, listen, um, because, like, it, it then, like, girls, a lot of them, right, especially they do that kind of stuff. They're trying to play, like, mind games with you. So, I'm, uh, I'm, like, ignoring them because I forgot that they existed because I was thinking about, like, you know, these other, like, five people that I'm talking to, and they figure that I'm ignoring them, so they want me to give them more attention, so they try harder for it. And so, I've got this whole rotation of these, like, girls trying to talk to me because I'm ignoring them because I'm talking to other girls, but they don't know it. Like, and I did this all the time, man. Like, this was basically, like, my job because I didn't have it. Yeah, it's like a rotation. And uh, it, it works really well. Like, I wouldn't do it if it didn't work, right? And uh, it was a great idea. First time try hard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, try hard. Wow, look at that. We had a try hard. We had a usage of try hard that wasn't obviously fucking racist. That's great, guys. That's why I haven't banned the emote. It's okay. Yeah, I wasn't really much of a Chad, but yeah, I would talk to like 10 of them at a time. And I, I remember like, I, I never really felt bad about it either. Like, cause I'm like, yeah, there, I mean, you know, why not? I, I still don't really feel bad that I did it, but it's ridiculous to go back and look and see what I did though. I, I don't know. Um, okay, let me go back over here. High school is my best years. I did this like right as soon as I got out of high school because I didn't have anything else to do. It was kind of like having different like games that I was playing, right? And one was like Stacy, the other one was like Amanda. And I would be like trying to get to the next level. And then as soon as I got stuck on one of them, I'd basically uh, stop playing it until the catch up mechanic came back and I was able to advance in the story again. And it was actually great. Like, I I'm telling you, like, it was just. It's just completely fucking, it, 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 absolutely disgusting that I used to do that, but, <laughs> hey man, I don't feel bad, that's the way it goes, I was a terrible person, fuck them, they do the same shit, well yeah, I mean like, you think like, oh, you think Amanda's only talking to you, no, there, she's talking to, to Tanner, to Chad, to Tyrone, to Bill, to, you know, this other, like, sugar daddy, you know, uh, Robert, the 45-year-old, you know, stockbroker that buys her Gucci shoes. You know, like, no, man, everybody does the same shit, so I don't even give a fuck. Stoics and therefore be able to deal with- I don't know what that had to do with WoW, but, you know, that's what I do. What are you doing in Achievement Stream? 
Let me see. Let me, let me look at the, the calendar, man. Uh, achievement stream. Maybe No, I can't do it on Saturday because Izzy leaves on Saturday. Uh, maybe like next Saturday or something like that. I, I can plan on doing the achievement stream next Saturday. Uh, how about that? Yeah, achievement stream next Saturday and I go for 30K. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, I, it's just the only thing about that is like maybe I could do achievement stream on Saturday and then this Sunday will be Bloodborne. That actually could be really good. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually going to set that up. Create event. Um, achievement stream. Uh, okay, I'm going to invite myself. Okay, creating that. All right, and then create event. Because this is the only calendar I ever look at. Uh, Bloodborne. Okay, and I'll create that event too. So then I've got an idea of, like, what I was thinking about doing. Uh, Glory of the Desire War Raider. I'm going to do that on the 23rd probably. Maybe sub it on the 22nd and finish it on the 23rd. When are you doing an Alliance versus EU Transmog contest? I was thinking about doing a For the Alliance uh, run because I, I really enjoy doing that. that. That's honestly the truth. I just have fun. Uh, it's just I worry about the servers crashing again. But we can try it and see how it goes. But right now I want to finish the video because I've spent like a an hour talking about this. Okay, here we go. All this stuff. But I think it is best to understand uh, how all of this plays a major role in communications and the eroding impact that this really has, where often you're not engaging with people's thoughts, you're engaging with people's feelings put out into the world at a time where they're, they're being felt at their highest magnitude. They That's right, because you, if, if you appeal to emotion, it's like kind of cheating. But you know what happens whenever you're cheating? you usually win i mean you usually win that that's what happened like because if you're cheating right it, it, you're you're gonna win and that's my best advice right i'm not talking about yeah i'm not talking about being like transparent or whatever but it's like if you appeal to people's emotions they're gonna be more likely to agree with you because people think emotionally because most people don't really have the capacity for like rational critical thought it, it's just not it, they just they just don't so if you try to appeal to people rationally or critically it doesn't make a difference at all okay here we go yes they do no they don't it definitely might be do you know how i can know that people in general don't don't think rationally it's twitch chat resemblance to what you know anyone thinks um but might maybe not as good as say if you you know had them write an essay on their viewpoint. Certainly it won't be an ideal representation. That means that we're just not really engaging with people at their best. We're engaging with people at their most feral, right? When the primal emotions that drive us all kind of take hold. Now look, I'm guilty- Using the internet as a basic, lol. We think that's funny. Okay, go watch Nancy Grace as she wants pot banned because one, one college slut got upset and got high too much and drove into a tree. And she wants pot banned. And then there's other uh, other middle-aged moms that agree with her. The internet is smarter, if anything. It, it, it's like you, you watch these stories. It's like, uh, you know, one person has something bad happen. And then the entire world is supposed to change. And no. Like, it, it, it's, it's even worse than real life. Believe this tweeting dumb things reacting too strongly to things um you know engaging with people uh, and myself you know in, oh this like, is my about me trail of myself and uh, you know just veering into the territory of communicating with people in bad faith all these things i think happen to everyone and really okay. i think all of this is it's kind of the it's the big downside of many aspects of the modern age so these are some of the fundamental communication problems that I think lead to things being really messy, be it World of Warcraft, politics, which I'm not going to be touching here, or anything else. That's now, a good idea. These same failures of hum uh, human communication, as facilitated by the power of gamified, growth-driven technology platforms, seem to just be wreaking havoc across the world in general. Perhaps by better understanding how all of these mechanics impact us in World of Warcraft land, we can actually be a little bit better prepared for the real world. Now. With all that said, let's go. Uh, let's get on to World of Warcraft, starting with this channel. 
And yeah, we're gonna go for thumbnails and titles, because come on, they're probably what you're thinking about right now. It's certainly what I'm thinking about. Um, and it's not like my thumbnails are subtle. Yeah, this the is actually a very, very a smart World thing to Warcraft say. Warcraft character pose with an emotion that I think will resonate with the viewers based on the topic. Yes. Be it something that is hopeful or something that is, you know, a reaction to a pretty shocking, you know, headline. Take the thumbnail of J. Allen Brack destroying the Heroes of the Storm logo. When creating that, I knew where public opinion was yep. on the issue and yep. what the immediate reactions would be. So I made a thumbnail that would resonate with that. After all, it is in line with my own personal knee-jerk reaction, which was kind of like, what? Now, that said, is it clickbait? No, it's not. Clickbait is when a thumbnail is not in line with the topic of the video. What the thumbnail is, though, is it is a thumbnail. Here, I'll show you what clickbait is. Okay, and then there's, uh, uh, these are, uh, well, you know, I was going to draw boobs, but we're not going to do that. Uh, so then you have a person, and, and then after that, there's a circle with an arrow pointing to it. And then they say, oh my God. Okay, and, and this is basically, oh, just a, no, cancel that. Okay, uh, let, let's see, is this good? Yeah, this is good. So this is exactly what clickbait is, as you guys can see right here. Uh, this is every single, uh, every single show that you've ever seen, right? Every single YouTube video. Like, let me see if I can find some. Uh, you won't believe what happened. Well, you can't see. What do you mean? You, what do you mean you can't see? Oh. There it is, boys. There it is. I, I didn't even. I forgot I had that other thing in front of me. See, like, I mean, what, what do you even say about that kind of shit? It, it's so obvious what's going on here, right? I mean, there's so many of them. You won't believe what happened in Indonesia. That is impossible. Two weeks ago, what even is this video? What is this? What is happening? Oh my God. It's a pillar of fucking God that's coming to punish the sinners in Indonesia for not believing in the right book. It's like Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. Let's see, what's this? Oh, oh, I know what that is. That's a spaceship. Oh, okay, and then let's go over here. And now we'll get to the real content of the video, which is Ted and Bill sitting in their apartment talking about how much money this video is going to accumulate from people that are really dumb. And th these are the two masterminds behind this video. Uh, they've thought everything out and they can see everything. Well, at least he can. Uh, look at this, man. I, 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 oh wait, what, what's that? Oh, it's a kangaroo. Like, really? You won't believe that there's a kangaroo in a pool? I, I can believe that. It's not a big surprise. You know, I, I've seen a lot of this kind of stuff before. No, this is a coke, bro. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, it's a kangaroo. Like, wow, big, wow, oh, oh, wow, there's clouds. Oh, there's a shore. What, what happens on the shore? Something got rushed up. Something got, got pushed up on the shore. Well, you know what that obviously is. It's Aquaman because he got kicked out of Atlantis again because Avengers is a real thing. Or the Justice League. Who cares? You won't believe that there's a car in the water? Like, come on, guys. Like, I could very well believe that. Like, th this is not a... I mean, really, I, I could totally fucking believe that there's a car in the water. <laughs> okay, all right, let let's go back to it. Sorry. 
that is absolutely aware of how it's going to be perceived. Now, once the actual visual uh, video rolls, then I see it uh, being my job to start off with a knee-jerk reaction that everyone, myself included, has, or, you know, many people, and then progress that to the more slowed down and reasoned position on the issue. Okay. The goal of a video like that is to interest somebody based on the wide narrative and then take them towards a more reasoned out position. At least that's the primary reason why I script my content instead of just flicking on the camera scripted. and speaking in my mind. Because yes, everything I do is scripted. I know that... Whenever I used to do my videos, I would have like my notepad and it would be... Uh, where, where is it? Let me open up a notepad. You know what? Fuck it. I'll do another one of these. Notepad. Okay. Uh, wait, what the fuck? Why is it all the way over there? What the fuck? Uh, it's like messed up or something. Oh no, it's behind, it's behind the frame. Okay. Yeah. It'd be like, uh, BFA is not good. It sucks. Legendaries are bad. I don't like Titan forging. Vanilla was the best. There it is. And so that's basically all I need to go on a 30 minute rant. And then that's the short rant. And then there's a longer version, which is my stream. And that goes on for like four hours until I, I just get tired of talking. Okay, here, let's go to the rest of this what comes his job is to capitalize on make more videos marco i i really can we can we expand on this his fucking job is to capitalize on nerd rage and then make more videos echo chambering the calamity talk marco 44 what specifically makes you think that bellior is capitalizing on outrage rather than reporting things from his own personal perspective right like so how, how do you distinguish between the two because what i'm going to probably learn here is that the difference is you don't like bellior so you're ascribing negative attributes to him that reinforce your predisposition to dislike him and there's actually nothing specific that he has done i mean let, let, let's let's be honest He, did he leave? He said no and left. Well, he's a stupid person. I mean, I hate to say it because he's like subscribed to the stream, right? But like, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to have people that are dumb just going around being dumb. A and it, it's like people that, that do stuff like that. They just like make these unsubstantiated claims that are bullshit. And it's annoying for everyone. Probably gifted a sub. Probably, yeah. To my mind immediately is probably not the true form of my reasoned out opinion. Now, I know that running the channel that way is a bit of a high risk operation and the downsides are not lost on me. The channel seems to be particularly good at taking off people who hold a strong opinion on either side. Um, I mean, as compared wow, to that most reminds of YouTube, me of somebody. this channel actually does run at a statistically high dislike ratio. Now, to be upfront on the business side of things, not doing those thumbnails and those titles would decrease video views, probably an average of about 30 to 50%. Yep. More importantly, it would also kill the potential of videos to go viral. Um, really, that's just the way it is with the YouTube and how, um, algorithms, uh, how the algorithm works. And when this channel is supporting the income of six people by funding the early stages of the game studio, wow. it would be foolish and irresponsible not to do that. So that's kind of the MO of six the channel. Uh, the titles and thumbnails basically are I start kind of YouTube again. my own knee-jerk reaction to something. Um, and then the actual content is basically me sitting down, writing out what I really think and trying to come to the, the more complete uh, you know, version of my thoughts. And that's generally why you'll see my videos be, you know, this is a big shocking bit of news. And then as we go through the video, it kind of moves towards a more reasoned and sometimes more hopeful position. Now this that's leads good. me on to a bit that I'm going to call the explanation problem. Being so reasonable. They say don't shoot the messenger. Well, in the modern day, I'd really like to say don't shoot the explainer. Uh, now, you know, my goal for a lot of these videos is to tackle the more dramatic topics um, in a way that is kind of explaining why people think what they do and what can be done based on that. So, yeah, this bit of the video will definitely seem self-serving. Basically, oh, I fine. worry that increasingly explaining something is seen as having a really strong opinion on it. For an example, explaining common criticisms on Azerite. 
that can be done in a non-biased, non-narrative-driven way that I think is extremely useful. Okay. One problem is that it will often be seen as adding fuel to a fire when it's actually an attempt to um, kind of, you know, rescue good ideas from the firestorm and then share them. So across the board, I think we see this conflation where talking about an issue is by default seen as uh, taking Promoting a side. Promoting it, yeah. And speaking of taking a side, I just want to talk about narratives and wow, because the binary positivity and negative, uh, negativity problem is something that's really noticeable from my position. Now, of course, my ability yeah, to see I've this, seen this a lot is too. because you know, of all of you supporting my content. Um, what I have noticed is, as an example, you know, I'll do news and I'll be disliked Bond for being negative. Then I'll do a video where I'm genuinely excited about the lore and that'll be disliked Bond you're a shill. because WoW's dead and why am I bothering? At least that's according right. to the comments. I think it kind of highlights a problem of binary narratives because from my perspective, I can be highly critical of aspects of World of Warcraft, but I can also be highly excited about others. Nothing's a singular entity, but the power of overarching narratives is such that many people do just really reduce things down. And really, that's the thing about hopping on a big positivity or negativity train. You know, you get to think a single thing, either a good thing or a bad thing, and you've got a built-in set of allies to back you up. And it's not really not that good. And obviously, I yeah, find myself I, I, I falling into these traps that. all the time as well. Now, with World of Warcraft specifically, I think there's a few more factors that play into it. There is a bit of a sunk cost fallacy. At the end of the day, we're all dinosaurs here. We've been in this game for a long time. I also think the game's a part of many Man, of our why identities. why have to say that? And, you know, indeed, this game got a lot of us, myself included, through some pretty dark yeah, times. Yeah, I've played so the game for 10 years. A, a special place. And to be clear, I can't blame years. anyone for that. But I want to move on to a section I'm calling Digital Monk. Because sometimes I see people say that they think I have, like, a level head and things. Um, yeah. Or that my analysis comes off as being kind of reasonable or a bit hopeful. Now, I think the most helpful thing that I've done to allow that to happen is to disengage because I kind of know I'm really, you know, I can be prone to, you know, getting on the train, so to speak. So I only check Twitter once a day and I've uh, muted all social media notifications on my phone, bar Slack. Wow. I barely watch any World of Warcraft content on YouTube and Good I idea. never watch content about a topic that I've not yet covered um, until after I've written the video. Huh. Uh, nothing's been better for my mental health and also I think my ability to be kind of balanced as basically disconnecting from the click economy as much as I can. Um, and I think that that's means he doesn't watch Asmongold now, React what this videos. taught me is that when I engaged heavily online all the time, it just served to strengthen my own existing opinions and, f you know, fan the flames of my emotions in a very predictable way. No, if he disconnected, he'd be playing a demon hunter. Hey, it wasn't useful. So I suppose, I mean, if you ever feel like something's taking up too much headspace, my personal recommendation from experience would be the disengaging the with that away media from could actually yeah, there be you a good go. thing to do. So for me, the key thing about this video is I just want to get across why I think things are the way that they are um, and just, you know, help a little bit, I guess. Um, I think it's, it's becoming very hard to have an idea-based discussion, and I think these are some of the core reasons why. I think that understanding this stuff is really helpful um, okay. if you don't want to be driven mad by the state of online communication these days. Um, a lot of the time, it just seems like there's a kind of a lack of understanding between people, and when that happens, the default is to lampoon the other person's motive and not to understand what they think. So my hope is that through talking through my own experience with this, from running the channel, and um, you know what I think of all this stuff, I mean, based to, like, on the pretty large amount of data that I get through the uh, likes I'll and the dislikes and the comments, um, that I can just kind of help explain why things are the way that they are. So. That's my take on the there state of communication in general and how it impacts World of Warcraft specifically, as well as my own experiences of how it's been with the channel and how I have tried to you know, deal with all that. So I'd love to hear what you've got to say about this. That's really all that I have today. The third part of my Wrath of the Lich King documentary is coming up Ooh, super soon. I more also content. have a, um, Thank a preparation God. guide for Thank season two coming God. up really soon as well. So uh, there is actual content coming in the channel and not just bizarre thought pieces like this. So let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, I, I mean, like, obviously the, the thing, the problem with this, right, is that I think he's like kind of trying to aim the video at people that are like reasonable and, you know, like kind of you, you can talk to and, and just like have conversations with. And, and that's not really possible. Uh, that's really the issue, right? Is like you have these conversations and like people that watch videos like that are just gonna get mad, right? That's all there is to it because that's what they do. They just get mad and um, well, Let's see watch this video World of Warcraft is garbage an essay look everybody's wanted me to watch that video Like let me see how long it is first. I, I do want to watch it 
How, how, how long is this? Okay, yeah, I guess we can watch it. Yeah, a lot of people have wanted me to see this, okay? Um, and, and I think that it's about time. Uh, w what do you guys think? Is it time to do it? It's so fucking political. Well, I mean, we're still gonna watch the video. Like, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, then fuck it. I figure we'll watch the video. And after that, I, I, I kind of want to do a For the Alliance run. I haven't done that for a while. And it's one of the few things in WoW that I truly enjoy. Which is getting a huge fucking army of people together. And trying to have a battle. Right? That, that's basically what I'm going to do. And so that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and going under 30 FPS. Exactly. Uh, and, and lagging out. Exactly. Uh, well, hopefully we won't have any lagging out. And uh, the servers will be better now. Uh, and also, like, I kind of like doing this as a way to, like, just test to see, like, where we're at, right? Can we still have eight people in the same zone without having the servers catch on fire and explode in a nuclear explosion? You know, we don't really know. And uh, I think, you know, doing the, uh, the runs like that, it kind of keeps tabs on those things, and it makes it a little bit more interesting. Not going to happen? Well, no, I, I think that it will. I mean, usually I've done it before. It's been really fun. Uh, let me kill this guy real quick, then I'll start the video, okay? Uh, just give me a second. Uh, good luck finding 100 people that play the game. <laughs> Look, dude, I think a lot of people play WoW. Like, the thing with WoW is that it's, like, its audience is very, very specific. And they're probably the most fickle audience that you can ever have. Because inside of WoW, there are people that only watch, like, different elements of the game, right? There are people that only watch PvE. People that only watch PvP. People that only watch Arena. People that only are interested in RBGs. People that don't care about raiding. People that only care about raiding. People that want to watch Mythic Plus. People that hate Mythic Plus. And all of the people and everything, it's a mistake, I think, to try to appeal to, like, the, the WoW audience to, to an extent. Because they're just so fickle, there's no way for you to make them happy. But... The, the upside of that is that a lot of those people are very, they're, they're very supportive. And obviously, like, they do care a lot about, like, supporting people that are in the community. So I would say that is a good, uh, a, a, at least a silver lining about it. Um, just a second. Let me look over here, okay? We're fickle as fuck. Yeah, they're, they're very fickle. And I, I don't think it's a good idea to try to uh, uh, appeal to those people. Because you're never going to make them happy unless you're doing exactly what they want. And as soon as the, the second that you step out of that or you express an opinion, it's like basically being political, right? I mean, people are as opinionated about WoW as they are about Donald Trump. You know, it's very hard to have like normal conversations with people like that.